Issue 235. We start out with Silver finding a hidden room, a private stud in the Onks Island building. Edmund lampshades not knowing about this place, and Silver notes that somebody had been researching the old Freedom Fighters. Who? After Eggman jokes about Snot Silver turning himself upside down to dust the room with his hair, Silver finds Antoine's old diary, which has survived for 200 years by this point, and says that he knows who the traitor is. Right away, absolute bullshit, because someone whose best language is one that's not native to the region they're living in would never write their diary in a language that all of their friends can understand. Especially since he clearly doesn't want anybody they know to read it. So right away, the whole premise of the story falls apart, because Silver should have seen that the diary was written in French. Plus, now I don't know about the common practice with what happens to diaries after people die, but I'm pretty sure Antoine's friends would have destroyed his diary out of respect for the guy after he was gone to respect his privacy and prevent anyone from reading it. Like, why would he want anybody to read his diary even after he's gone? There's no way he would have survived for 200 years of a bad future. Although the story already didn't hold any water, since Silver should have used his time travel gem to find out who the traitor was by warping to the right time and place. If he just kept using time travel, he would have found the right time and place eventually. Instead, we're still being forced to put up with a stupid plot thread, and now it's got the most tasteless of all timing, because he thinks Antoine is a traitor when he just sacrificed his life to save Elias. Well, he might as well have, anyways. Bunny says that while they're using a ring on Antoine, it doesn't work for him as well as it does for Sonic since it enhances one's natural abilities and he has none. Uh, so they're using a ring, and rings grant wishes. Like, Sonic clearly made a ring grant a wish to get Colin back to normal. So why didn't they just wish Antoine out of the coma? Why would they, why would they even mention the ring? If they're, not, if they're just going to ignore the elephant in the room. Then Bunny says that she arbitrarily refused to have the emerald thing that woke up King Max be used on Antoine because she blames it for the king going insane and not the fact that he was poisoned. Idiot! This arbitrary idiocy uses an excuse to eliminate the obvious solution to cure him that was already firmly established in the universe and justify keeping him out of commission for the rest of the comic. It's not bad enough that they completely ignored the ring being a potential way to save him. You think that the king trying to get Sally to marry Antoine was proof that his brain was screwed up before the emerald thing was used on him. Bunny continues to completely waste time talking to someone who can't hear her, and then hopes her friends will forgive her for what she has to do to protect them better. Logic would dictate that she would demand Rhoda or Tails or Uncle Chuck to give her cyborg parts. But instead, because she said forgive, this is obviously trying to lead up to her joining Dark Egg Legion with the Baron just so she can get cyborg parts. A story we're never going to get to see fleshed out because laziness. And that's so arbitrary because she could have easily just asked Rotor for this favor, or at least asked him to make her a strappable arm cannon and a jetpack, and then she wouldn't have to worry about having explosives in her. Moggle tells Silver that his memory of Sonic's time is hazy. I'm guessing because it was so long ago, and he says that Ixus was leading the resurgence of his Order of Ixus, even though we don't see any other wizard than him, who isn't trapped in his mind. So maybe Muggles accidentally spoiled a future plot point. And considering how powerful Ixus is, getting new powers as the plot demands it, I have a hard time believing that he couldn't just get the wizards out of him and back to physical form with a spell. Muggle expresses regret over how he could have been helping the world back then, and then he reiterates that all of this came to pass because one of the original Freedom Fighters supposedly took action that destroyed the other Freedom Fighters. The In Your Face story shows that's bullshit. If only Silver could talk to Nicole. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, that's another big plot hole. Nicole's from the future. Why can't she just talk to him in private and say, hey, I'm from the future too, and none of the Freedom Fighters were destroyed? Silver says that in Antoine's diary, he can see how jealous he was of Sonic and how he thought he was the only one fit for command. What's left of the last few entries are too many witnesses, and then it's my hope that was such a strong show of force. Again, he should have written in French. Why would he even write this? This plot is dumb. 
And what would be even more dumb is not really explaining why he wrote those incriminating sentences, which they never do. Silver, mentioning that he's reading what's left of the last few entries, so there's probably ripped up pieces of paper he's reading. Silver says he also wrote Faith in August, Find Myself Divided, and Our True King. Silver comes to the conclusion that he was the one who brought Ixis into power, and not Jeffrey, who you'd think would go down in history in the, as that person. But I guess the bad future has barely any historical documents left as it is, which destroys the, the believability of Antoine's diary surviving. Then Silver says that he's found a picture of Sonic fighting Antoine, with the news headline about Sonic Battle's former friend, and a page says something about Silver fighting alongside Sonic. This will also never be resolved, by the way. Now, I, I tried to be not angry and bitter when I started doing this recording, but I just can't help it when the plot is so dumb. And the Freedom Fighters vanished during this period of time. I really hope this is properly explained. If not, it's a narrative cheat. The only, the only explanation I can think of is that it was planned that Antoine would wake up from the coma with amnesia, and would fight Sonic because of brain damage or something. Or maybe an Antoine infiltrator would be fighting Sonic. But we'll never know about that. And later on, Silver does, like, save the day and make it so that he doesn't need to fight alongside Sonic and Antoine. So how would this newspaper headline even come to pass? And it's never explained. And no, I'm not just blaming Penders in the lawsuit for this. If Flynn didn't write so far ahead, if he didn't postpone stuff so much and just wrap stuff up faster, I could have gotten to this headline explaining thing. Muggle says that he's warned Silver about abusing time travel too much, saying that even now their memories are fuzzy, and Silver says he's lucky Muggle and Edmund remember him at all. Whatever. If anything, he's not abusing it enough, or he would have saved the future a long time ago. Muggle says that Silver will chase this lead without taking the time stone with him, staying in the past until he finds the culprit. Pretty stupid decision, to say the least. Forever cheating Silver out of time traveling to the point of the betrayal, and he's basically sending the future's only hero away forever. I'm not letting the good art fool me into thinking the story is well written. Speaking of badly written, Muggle says that he'll write instructions for Silver on how to get back to the future without the time stone, because that's apparently possible, out of convenience. Why even tell him to go back without the time stone then? And just because he foils the traitor at one point wouldn't necessarily mean that there wouldn't be another so-called traitor incident that would lead to the future being destroyed. And who knows, maybe maybe the future wasn't ruined by the traitor incident, but could have also but was ruined by multiple different factors and Another one of those factors could happen after Silver followed his instructions to get back home, and then... Ugh. Tilt's his father shows up to Tails, who's got stress lines working in his workshop, and he reveals he hasn't been home in a while and his parents are worried about him. He's obviously working to try to avoid thinking about how depressing things have gotten and getting upset. Tails says that he has to get the tornado finished, talks for a long time about how he's riding all of his hopes on it, snaps and drops the crowbar on his foot and starts to cry, asking his father how he handles it when someone close to him gets into that kind of condition. He hugs him as the two start to cry, and Amadeus reassures him. I mean, this is sweet and all, but couldn't we have this kind of moment with Tails and Sonic? Tails is told that his mother is too busy with government business, and it breaks her heart because she'd much rather be here for him. Ixa says that he wants to exile Nicole from the city, as I wonder why the Council that hates her so much didn't already do this a long time ago. But he is using her failure to protect the city earlier as a recent justification. Dylan and Penelope look scared, Hamlin looks resentful, Rotor hates Hamlin and Ixus, Rosemary looks conflicted or worried for some reason, and Uncle Chuck looks depressed. Penelope naturally wonders how they even could exile Nicole since she runs every nana in the city, as he insists on referring to Nicole's program, and not Nicole as a person. I actually laughed at Rotor's stormy response. Could we legitimately exile her? No! <laughs> like, I definitely relate to him here. Then Nicole, as we only get a close-up of her head to an extreme extent, says that the nanites run on a very basic code and are rebuilding automatically, so the city can function without her. Why would you tell them this? Although she would be required for new buildings or defensive measures within the city, 
As Penelope and Chuck look depressed, Ixus insists that he defends the city. No, he fucking doesn't. He failed at the Death Egg, and he failed at fighting the Battle Lord. But let's not have any of the characters point that out, or even think it, since maybe they're not saying it out of fear. He then says that his citizens can build what they need. Yeah, but they'll take longer. Chuck says sadly the Exile means Nicole will be confined to Freedom HQ Science Lab without her body or a way to interact with her friends besides a screen. Shockingly, even Uncle Chuck agrees, with it being almost unanimous to banish Nicole. Wow, that was dickish on his part, and him sighing about it doesn't make it okay, or not out of character. Penelope and Dylan don't look happy either, but they're still being jerks. And Nicole somehow looks scared and surprised at this instead of being used to it and expecting it in her depressed state. Rotor furiously calls everyone out on how ungrateful they're being. Have you lost your mind? Nicole's one of us! A freedom fighter! She built the city for you! She saved every single one of us! And Chuck actually has the nerve to act like he's in the wrong, and needs to calm down, and he's the reasonable one. Fuck you! What a terrible role to put Sonic's lovable uncle in. This isn't Uncle Chuck. I refuse to acknowledge him as such. Chuck insists that while none of them are happy about it either, they're doing what the scared citizens want, so this is just a temporary measure to calm people down. This is why democracy fails. Rotor resigns out of protest, saying, This council is for the citizens, and it just betrayed one of them. And Nicole covers her mouth in horror as if he did something wrong. Well, he's kind of been doing something wrong by just sitting there uselessly on a council instead of being a freedom fighter all this time, so if anything, you'd think she would want him to give up earlier. But still, she's looking at him like he killed a puppy. And she even tries to stop him when he storms off. Why the hell would she object instead of being thankful? It's not like he was that helpful in being on the council anyways. He was always being outvoted by idiots. Which is why it feels better in an action series to have just one person in charge. At least Uncle Chuck had the sense to be proud of him. Rotor lampshades that he wasn't there for Sally or Antoine, and she's still his friend. She cries tears of joy and gives him a hug, thanking him as SPO looks sympathetic. Silver, watching from the bushes, feels bad while ever suspecting Rotor when he's being that kind. Honestly, even him being convinced that the other Freedom Fighters aren't traitors is arbitrary. Because, sure, it makes sense from the audience's perspective that him just being told that they're heroes or spending some time with them would convince him that they're not future traitors, because we know that they're good people. But logically, a person being kind and heroic in one time doesn't guarantee that they won't change and plan to cause trouble later. Just look at Jeffrey! Or Fiona! If Silver was interacting with them when they were heroes, he would have the same convincing. That wouldn't mean that he was right. Amy knocks on Sonic's door as he's locked himself inside, blaring music out of it. I wonder if that's sad or angry music. It would certainly make sense. So, really, Sonic deals with, like, big negative emotions like depression, uh, generally the same way that Sally does. He tries to bottle it up, like having music blare it away and not telling anyone about it. It's amazing that Sally had the breakdown and not Sonic. Amy reveals that, like Tails, she deals with depressing this by keeping busy. She helped Link up with Amadeus, delivered all of the well-wishing gifts to Bunny this morning, checked in with a really upset Rosie, and she says looking really sad that if she helps everyone else deal with grief, she won't have to. As Amy cries, being comforted by Sonic's parents, Sonic plays a guitar looking depressed and thinks about all the horrible ways he bullied Antoine in the past. I'm glad this issue is at least sort of kind of addressed, as he admits that Antoine deserved better. Though that's really the end of it. I still would have liked to see a, a short story where Sonic, where we saw the exact point where Sonic realized, you know, maybe I'm being too harsh on Antoine, maybe I should stop horribly bullying him. But no, we're not, we're not going to see that, so no justification for why he suddenly stopped bullying him. And, and just then, the worst possible timing, Silver tells Sonic that he thinks Antoine's a traitor. Sonic, I'm fully on your side for this one. Go get him, dude! He looks furious with his eye twitching, spin dashes at him, grabs him by the hair, dragging him to his hospital bed, and resentfully tells him why he's in the situation. Then Sonic looks horrified at seeing Bunny's letter. When Silver naturally accuses Bunny of being the traitor for going missing, which at least is slightly accurate since she's going to the Dark Egg Legion, Sonic spin dashes at him, and when Silver has a good sense to telekinetically hold him in the air so that Sonic can't give him any sort of satisfying blow, Sonic, looking demented and furious, has my full support as he says, Listen, there is no traitor. 
I believe in my friends. I believe you're a flake. Each of them is a hundred times the hero you want to be. Now, get out. Go home. Yes! He's absolutely furious. I love seeing him in this tranquil fury. It's so refreshing. Come on, Sonic. Punch him! I don't care if he's just misguided at this point. That traitor plot is just stupid. Though I'm more mad at Flynn than Silver. He doesn't know. When Silver says that he can't go home because he's stranded, Sonic says to get out of my sight as he's let go. Then he tells Jeffrey to go home as well, and Jeffrey proves he still has decency in him and isn't completely molded into a different character by saying that he still came to pay his respects to Antoine. So he's not evil, he's just thinking that Ixus is a good king. And since Ixus is the lesser evil to Robotnik and a powerful wizard who should logically be able to defeat him, I can understand why he'd be desperate like that. He doesn't know any better. He trusts him out of desperation, but he's still very obviously evil. Sonic talks about how, oh so coincidentally, it was only the Freedom Fighters that aren't in the games that are suffering so much. And he says that the Freedom Fighters are done, even though Amy and Tails are still just fine, and while Nicole is stuck in the lab, she can still help. Giving up a little early there. And Owlman, that's probably the one we saw before, convinces Silver to join the secret Freedom Fighters, and the story ends there. This issue is by Ian Flood, and as Silver go after Antoine as a traitor with the worst possible timing because of some leads that aren't fucking explained when they desperately need to be. A very incriminating newspaper showing Sonic and Antoine fighting, and Antoine's diary from childhood, which isn't written in French for some weird reason. Already the story's premise falls apart if you sneeze at it. Then Moggle says arbitrarily that Silver will go back in time without a time stone and not come back until he saves the future, even though having a time stone was the best way to do that. This is Ridiculous. He really should just be time traveling to every point in time he can think of that's around the Freedom Fighter time until he eventually comes up to that part in history he wants to prevent and can save everyone. We could have just had him appear once in the entire comic when he's needed to prevent that particular part in history. But he doesn't because they want to drag out the stupid time travel plot that had its novelty wear all a long time ago until it never gets resolved. Or at least, never satisfyingly. I don't blame Sonic one bit for snapping at Silver. As likable as Silver's naive, puppy face can be, I hate how he's so ineffectual in accusing all the heroes like that. If anything, Sonic was holding back way too much. I expected him to punch him, but he didn't even get into a fight! Although with Silver's ability to psycho hold him still, that'd be way too one-sided. But we could've at least seen him punch him. Oh yeah, also Bunny runs away to probably join the Baron to get Cyborg parts. Instead of just asking Rotor for an arm cannon strapped to her arm and a jetpack to hover and a ray gun to shoot for lasers, or outright asking to be cyborgized by him again, like would make sense. Instead, she's gonna run away all emotional, not thinking straight, because fuck logic. Her main flaw at this point in the comic seems to be that she's a stubborn idiot, like a stereotypical dumb Texan, so real progress there. But the problem is that it's not pointed out by the characters. So rather than being a intentional character flaw to make her feel more human, it feels entirely unintentional on the part of the writers and just a product of sloppy writing. And they say Sally's the nurse too. At least she's intentionally written to have a whole bunch of flaws. Bunny can be a total moron, forgetting the Iron Queen can control her over and over again, and forgetting that she's not a cyborg and still trying to fight her. And yet nobody calls her out on any of her mistakes, not even her enemy. Oh yeah, Sally told her to sit down a few times in issue 40, that totally makes up for it. I can't be non-negative about this issue and it sucks so much, I just can't. 